Welcome back guys, as you probably know a secret Izu bow has been found in Assassin's Creed Valhalla and I made a complete build around it which is able to deal up to 4000 damage. And if you really want to know if that's the new best bow then check out this build because I've done a lot of testing and you will be very surprised about the results. And of course a big shout out goes to Jiraptor and the ones who actually found out how to get this bow. The bow is located on a remote island here in the middle of the lake in northern Yorkshire. You can best use your fast travel point on Hadrian's Wall to get there. On that island you will find a small iron ore stack and actually you cannot break it. Even if you hit it with any ability or with any of your weapons you will not be able to break it. But there is a secret way to break it. The only thing you actually have to do is make a couple of attacks, use some abilities on that stack of stones and then make a manual save and simply reload that save. And then suddenly the iron ore stack has disappeared. If it doesn't work for the first time just continue hitting the stones and then just try to reload it again. It will actually work at the second or third try. It is really easy and then there's a pop up calling the Nodens Arc has been unlocked. The Nodens Arc is actually a pretty decent bow, it comes as musical status directly and when you fully upgrade it, it will have 133 attack and 99 headshot. But when you compare that to the Hunnish bow, the Hunnish bow actually has 138 attack and 97 headshot. So the Hunnish bow might actually be better, we will check that out in detail later. But the Nodens Arc has a very unique trait, which is increase attack the further you are from your enemy. But there's also a rune which can be placed in the Hunnish bow to get you the same effect. So we will check out later which bow is actually the best and you might already know the answer. But before that I will actually show you the whole build. And there's one more thing which is really important and I really have to talk to you about it. Which are these diamond runes and the perks. Because most of these diamond runes and perks actually don't really work. Whenever you fast travel or when you load up the game these effects from your armor or from your runes, from your diamond runes are not applied to your character. You have to unequip and re-equip your items constantly to make them work. Even the Huntsman armor set bonus is only active for your second hit so you have to make a hit to get a bonus which then lasts only for 2 seconds. Half of these runes don't even work and the rest of them has only an effect that lasts for 2 seconds. That's bullshit. They really need to fix it otherwise it is totally pointless to make any kind of builds or use them at all. But anyway let's check out the build. Of course I use the Huntsman set with complete ranged damage runes on every item. That is one of the best runes together with the melee damage. So you either place ranged damage or melee damage in all rune slots for your armor. I've also tried out to use the hidden one set. The hidden one set has an additional increase to headshot damage. But when I used the hidden one set and completely upgraded it, it turned out to be less damage when using the Huntsman set. So we will stick with the traditional Huntsman set here, place range damage runes on the cloak and then also range damage runes on all the other Huntsman set items. I will also show you a way how to get all these runes if you need them later in the video. The Huntsman set perk only kicks in when you make a long range hit. So you first have to make a long range hit and then you will deal a little bit more damage. That's only like 5 to 10% at best. So it's not much and it only kicks in when you make a long range hit. You have to keep that in mind. That's not always applied. You don't have that after you fast travel. You first have to make a long range hit and then you get the perk back. That also kind of sucks. It would be much better if it was permanently active. On the Nodens arc I placed the critical spark rune but of course you could also use the creation perfection which gives you health on critical hit or health on hitting weak spots. That would also work very well. Then I went for plus 7 ability damage here on the two round rune slots because that's giving me more damage when I use the charge shot ability instead of using only the plus 4 attack. Of course we will stick to our double spare here for the melee weapons and we will use increased range damage the heavier you are on the first spare and then increase attack when close to full health on the other spare. Both of these runes actually don't work. You have to unequip and re-equip them to make them work properly. So I will do that here now and then I will demonstrate you the real damage from the Nodens arc compared to the Hunnish bow. 
I've actually prepared a test range here for our arrows, which is located in Norway. We can simply use that assassin training's ground and hit these dummies. Every time we pause and reopen the screen, these dummies will actually respawn, so we can easily use that here in Fornburg. I place myself here next to that piece of wood lying on the ground and then I will shoot into that training ground, hitting the same dummies with the same distance, with the same abilities, same arrows, same damage every time. You can also see that our passive runes are now active because we have re-equipped our two spares and then we will try out first the Nodin's Arc with a normal shot, which deals 549 damage. Then we can close and reopen the screen to get that dummy on the building respawned and as you see there is another perk active which is the range damage from the bow which gives us then 3307 for the charge shot. Then we switch to the Hunnish bow which has the perk increase attacks the further you are from your enemy. So basically the same perk but just as a rune like the Nodin's arc. And with the first normal arrow shot with the same perks we deal 557 damage. When we just reload that dummy on the building and then we have the range damage also active, we get 3400 damage. So by using the Hunnish bow with the same perk but just as a rune instead of directly inscribed on it, we get the same amount of damage and even more so because we have 138 attack instead of 133. We have all the same items, we have all the same perks here, the two spares with both runes like we had in our build. So the Nodens Arc is actually nothing special, it only looks cool when you want to glow in the dark then use it, it's your choice. But I actually would prefer to use the Hunnish bow dealing a little bit more damage or simply place the rune on any other bow I like to use. The best method to get the range damage runes and all the diamond runes for this build is actually to use the merchant. Just go to the merchant, make a manual save before you talk to him. So just go there, save and then reload the save every time you don't like his inventory. He will have a different inventory, a different set of runes every time you reload your save. But only if you have not talked to him before. He will also always have a new scroll of knowledge, a new mark of Solbo, so you can buy all this stuff from the merchant. Even the great hunter rune here for plus two range damage. He will have every possible rune in the game. Sometimes it takes really long, so I tried 30 minutes until I got that range damage rune. So you have to keep trying reloading the saves, it will actually be there at some point. It's even harder to get the correct diamond runes because there's only one diamond rune slot at the merchant and that also unlocks only when you are really high level and when you upgraded your settlement. So only really go for them if you want it because that is real luck and takes very long. And the effect of all these diamond runes as explained is not really big if they are working at all. But once you manage to get one of your desired runes simply use the rune duplication and then that's it. The most important abilities for a hunter build are actually Focus of the Nornir and Mark of Death. Pretty much everything else can be ignored, but these two are really a must have. Especially Focus of the Nornir is really extremely good. It focuses on every enemy, you just have to make your headshots. At the end of the game you will have every ability and skill unlocked anyway, but if you want to make that build early on, then I will show you the best progression path here to get this build. At the beginning it's always best to go the assassin path to deal with higher level enemies, here grab the advanced assassination to exactly do that and then also the chain assassination and the adrenaline which is located in the assassin tree. Also use backstab because some of the finishers actually need backstab. Then you can either decide to go for emergency aim or go for the adrenaline in the warrior tree. I choose to go for more adrenaline here to use more of my abilities. Then simply fill out all the points here towards that adrenaline upgrade. There's also Berserker's Metal. Berserker's Metal is very important because when you get hit and you have a half completed adrenaline bar, you will actually lose that adrenaline if you don't have Berserker's Metal. After that you can go for the emergency aim that automatically locks on your target when you try to aim. That is really important. And then you will have to go for charge shot. Charge shot will be your strongest ability that deals the most damage in the entire game. The easiest way to get there is by using the assassin tree as a bridge and then go here for breakfall by the way and then all the way down here in the hunter tree for the last adrenaline bar. 
then you can also get the last chance healing on your way to charge shot and also the grid ability both very powerful abilities that you should have in any build anyway and then you have charge shot and with only 77 points you are completely set and have a very good hunter build early on all the abilities here in the middle are really weak and you should really not focus on them you can go for a bow stun finisher and arrow reinforcement to collect more arrows here the adrenaline fiend or warrior takedown that will give you more adrenaline in the warrior tree but that's pretty much a very solid build here and it only uses 77 points of course after that when you get more points you can fill out the whole tree and then you will be totally overpowered anyway so i hope you like this build please don't forget to subscribe leave me a like and see you next time